Okay, we have an interesting integral. We have the integral from zero to one, x to the s minus one, natural log one minus x, dx. And for our solution to this, it's gonna be a pretty nice formula that I wanna derive, and I'm gonna do it two different ways. I can think of two ways anyway. So for the first method, what I wanna do is use the power series expansion for natural log one minus x. This is gonna be the same thing as minus the sum from one to infinity of just x to the n over n. The convergence on this is the same as geometric series between zero and one, but we've got no problem as our bounds are between zero and one. So what I can do is just take this part here and plug it back into our integral. We'll still have this x to the s minus one piece. Then for the minus sign, let me bring the minus sign out front for now, I think. And then next, let me just distribute this x to the s minus one inside the sum, combining them as we've got the same base of x in this and this. So when I do that, I can write it as x n plus s minus one, just combining exponents over n. And then let's just swap the order of the integral and the summation. We can do it. We have the convergence that we established on the previous board. But then we can just go ahead and integrate this. This is just going to be power rule. n's just a constant. So we're going to have this all within our sum. Then integrating, we just need to add one on the power here. So this is going to be x to the n plus s over n times n plus s evaluated from zero to one. Evaluating at zero, that's just gonna all be a zero. That's gonna zero everything out. You plug in a one, the exponent's not gonna matter. It's just gonna be a one. So this whole thing is gonna reduce down to this sum of just one over n times n plus s. And then here you could do partial fractions, but I'm gonna kind of avoid it because I always like to avoid it if I can, pretty much. I mean, I guess sometimes I like to do it up, but let's just keep avoiding it for now. So. In order to do this, I want to force the cancellation to happen I want that I want. So, so I'm going to create the n plus s to cancel with this. And then also let's create a second part, an n, to cancel with this. Now by doing that, I've changed it. The n's are going to cancel, but now we've got an s in the numerator. And what we want, this was originally a 1. And 1 is definitely not s. Well, I guess s could be 1, but not all the time. So this is still true. So what we want to do on this is let's get rid of this and let's divide off the s. So if I do a one over s in front, then even though we've got s in the numerator, that's gonna cancel off and just be one. So let me just rewrite this, splitting up the fraction, but then I can cancel n plus s with n plus s here, and cancel n's here, leaves just a one in the numerator. So let's just clean this up and see what it looks like. And then what we notice here is this thing is exactly in the right form for the digamma function. So we have our series expansion for the digamma function over here and it's really, this is identical really to this. It's just a different variable. Our input on this is going to be z. So in order to get a formula for this, we all we need to do really is, this is the euler mascheroni constant. Let's just add it on both sides so that we've isolated. So now we've isolated just the sum in our form here. So all we need to do is really just use this right here, but we're just inputting. We've just got s as our input here on the digamma function. So all we need to do is put it in this form. And so putting this together, my formula for this is gonna be minus one over s times the gamma function z plus one plus Euler mascheroni constant, and that's it. Okay, moving on to method two now, doing something, starting off a little more straightforward. We're just gonna do integration by parts on it because what we can do is, I'll do the di method and I'll just differentiate natural log because that's the way we usually do it. And so let's integrate x to the s minus one. So then when I differentiate this, we get one over one minus x. Chain rule is gonna bring a minus sign out. Integrating here, just power rule, this is gonna be x to the s over s. So then we've got part of the solution on the diagonal. We're gonna be integrating this second row here. So write down the diagonal first, we have this x to the s over s, natural log one minus x from zero to one. I would evaluate it. Notice that the zero part is just gonna be zero. But one is kind of a problem. When you plug one in here, you have a zero. So this is going to minus infinity times one. So if we just plug in right now, this is gonna diverge. So we'll leave that for now and move on to this integral. Minus times minus is plus. So this integral is gonna be integral from zero to one. Let's bring the one over s in front of it. And then it's just gonna become x to the s over one minus x. Then let's just deal with this integral off to the side for the moment. So like, this one's actually not too bad, but what I want to do is first to get some cancellation, we have one minus X. If I subtract one 
If I subtract one, that's gonna help with cancellation. I don't wanna change it, so we'll add a plus one on there. So then I can break this up into two integrals. The first one's just gonna be this x to the s minus one, one minus x. The second one, breaking it on the plus sign, is gonna be just one over one minus x. I don't know if I said I wanted cancellation with this. That only really works with integer values, and we don't know, we, don't have, we have no condition that says s needs to be an integer. So I don't wanna try to factor this or anything right now, but one thing I can do is, let's just reverse the sign on this, bring a minus sign out front. And then this integral I can just do, this is just gonna be natural log one minus x, a minus comes, comes up front. I don't need to worry about absolute value as the bounds are between zero and one. This is always gonna be positive. And so now we evaluate this from zero to one. But then evaluating this has the same problem we had over here. But what I wanna do is bring these two together and then see if we can evaluate it that way. Because in both cases, we have natural log one minus x, we get this minus one. So what I'll do to try to make this so we can evaluate it, bringing the minus one in front of this, we'll have x to the s minus one over s times natural log one minus x evaluated from zero to one. And then we still have this integral here to deal with, with the dx, let me bring this right here and we'll see if we can evaluate this thing and finish it off. Now let's see if I can deal with this part. Now first, when you plug zero in, here we get natural log of one, that's gonna be a zero. This is just gonna be some constant value. So this zero part goes away. When you plug one in, this part here is gonna be a zero. You plug a one in here, this is gonna be natural log of zero. This is gonna be going to minus infinity. So this right here is an indeterminate form. What you can do is you can do this limit out with Bopital's rule. What you'll find when you do this, this limit is gonna be going to zero. And so all we're left with is this integral right here. We've got a minus sign out front. One thing I noticed, I forgot this one over S. So let's put that back. But now for this integral, we've got a formula for this. We've got a way to express this in terms of the digamma function. So let's look at the formula really quick. And so with our integral right here, it's in exactly the form of this thing here. We just have an S instead of a Z on it. Again, kind of just like with the sum, this part works basically the same way. If I just add or the mascaroni constant on both sides, then we've got a way to express our integral right here. So let's just use this and plug it back in. So what we're gonna have here is minus one over S, plug in all this stuff, and it's just gonna be digamma of S plus one plus Euler mascaroni constant, and that's it. And now I'm noticing that I did mess up my variables over here. This should be an S from the, from the first part, just showing. So fixing that, you can see these two solutions are the same. Now from here, you might be wondering if you were actually doing this integral, you might not want to leave your solution in terms of the digamma function. Well, there is a lot of ways that you can reduce these values into a number. I have a playlist on the digamma function. You can check that out on some of those methods. But if S is an integer, you just have, you have this reduction formula that you can reduce it one at a time like this, just using this formula. But if you have to do this repeatedly, it can be kind of a pain. So you've got another formula where you can express it with harmonic numbers. But then for non-integer values, you can use the reflection formula, the multiplication formula, Gauss digamma theorem. There is a formula for half integer values. So there's just a lot of different ways based on what this S plus one number is. Okay, there you go. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.